Hey, I am Patricia with Buzz and Bark Animal Reiki, and I'm going to do a Reiki series for animals. And a lot of the information that I'm going to be giving in this series is also good for humans and pretty much anything. It's just um, how we can apply Reiki to working with animals. And so today I am going to talk a little bit about what Reiki is, for those of you who are not familiar with it, although I think a lot of people really are familiar with it. Uh, more so than ever. So Reiki was founded by Makao Asui. He was, I'm thinking he was like a Zen Buddhist. I always thought he was a monk, but he might have been a monk or he might have been somebody. And he was at a retreat center on a mountain in Japan. And during his meditations, he had a vision. He had some light come to him. And then he had this vision about this hands-on healing. And of course, um, Reiki is an energy. It's the universal life force. It comes through the crown of an attuned person's head, goes through the heart, and then comes through the arms and goes out through the palms. And it's delivered through the palms of the hands. But I've found through experimentation, you can also deliver Reiki through your eyes. You can deliver it through your feet. You can deliver it through you know other parts of your body. But mostly, you know, traditionally, it is delivered through the palms of the hands. There are traditional hand positions that are used by Reiki practitioners. Although a lot of people have tried their own hand positions or have combined hand positions, uh, some people, uh, Reiki practitioners, will work mainly with just unblocking the chakras. Some will uh, unblock the chakras, work with meridians, and others will work directly with organs. So they'll use hand positions that are, you know, with the heart or the liver or the kidneys, you know, and others will um, put, you know, they'll put their hands directly on an injured limb an injured foot, an injured hand. I mean, Reiki can be done in so many different ways. Now, when we're doing it with animals, we don't necessarily use hand positions because animals are moving around. And there are some Reiki practitioners who are, I don't know, must be very good at it, but they are able to get the animal to lay down, maybe on a type of um, a table, uh, the type that they do the sound therapy on for animals. Or maybe they're just on the floor and they put the animal in their, their animal bed and then they sort of can do hand positions that way. But there is one hand position though that works really well with animals and that is, well I don't have any of my um, stuffed toys with me right here. Um, let me see if I can grab this one. Yeah. Okay, um, it's where you hold the back of the, you have one hand on the back of the animal and then one hand, the heart of a dog would be like in this area. It would not be here, it would be here. So you would, um, kind of hold this position and this is a very comforting um, I, I saw this in uh, I think it was the Art of Reiki book I can't remember the author it was a fantastic book in fact I have it on my list of books that I need to buy because I borrowed it from the library so this is a good position of you know um, transferring love to an animal if the animal will accept the hand positions because I'm going to get into that in just a minute another one is an, and okay now dogs definitely do not like being touched on the head but it depends on the dog but if there's some way that you can uh, work with the crown chakra on the dog or you know the ears um, you could also do it above the head like this where you're not actually putting your hand on the dog and it also depends on how mellow the dog is or how mellow the cat is like you, there may be some animals who will cats will actually come up to you if you have your hands and you're sitting on a couch or something even when you're not giving reiki they'll come up and they'll they'll butt their heads like this and then they'll sometimes you know kind of run their bodies underneath the hands that's because the cats want reiki and they know when you know how to do reiki they know when you're attuned because when you're attuned you're actually vibrating at a different frequency than somebody who's not attuned and that's, you know, so, and I feel like Reiki is always going, like you can stop the flow, like if you're giving a session, you run your hands under cold water and drink some cold water, and that will actually, you know, stop the session or, or conclude the session. But I really feel like somebody who's attuned to Reiki, especially the all three levels, and there's even a fourth level, because there's a, I think it's like a master master, or I can't remember what a grand master, or whatever the title is, but it, that wasn't in the Asui Reiki tradition, that was in a different Reiki tradition. And, but yeah, there, there could be four levels, um, there are three symbols that a Osui Reiki practitioner works with, and then there's the master symbol, so that makes it a total of four symbols, but you don't get the master symbol unless you train to be a Reiki master. So if you want to train in Reiki, there are three levels. The first level is a, a Reiki, uh, it's, it's kind of like an introductory session, and I, I don't remember if you have the attunements with the second. I think you may get like two symbols with the first, and then one symbol with the 
because you don't get the distance symbol until you train in the second level. But anyways, the first level, you can do Reiki on yourself, you can do Reiki on your family members, you can do Reiki on friends, and you can do Reiki on pets in person. So then the second level gives you the option of doing remote Reiki. Now a lot of us, especially during the lockdowns, had to do remote Reiki on clients because we weren't allowed to go to people's homes, you know, we were distancing and, and all the rest of that. So it's kind of hard to do Reiki in person, hands on, if you have to be six feet away from somebody. It's just not even possible. So the second level is the distance symbol, which is Hosha Jishonin. And when you uh, work with that symbol, you can also work with the other two symbols, which is the power symbol and the healing symbol. The emotional healing symbol, I think, is what it is. And you're able to do Reiki over the phone. You can do it Zoom. You can do it uh, with a picture. There's so many ways you can do it remotely. And if you have family that lives in other places and they're requesting a session or you have a client that's in another place and they're requesting a session then you need to have both the first level and the second level of Reiki now they're both have a lot of complexity when you're learning them but once you learn the hand positions once you learn the symbols once you learn you know the different meditations and things like that it's an ongoing process you're always learning but once you learn the basics you're off and running and then you can start making it more creative maybe adding some things that are your own like putting you know crystals or singing bowls or tuning forks uh, maybe you, you add chants or drumming um, so there's different things that you can add to Reiki depending on you know what your your background is now some massage therapists use Reiki like they'll do the massage therapy and then they'll do Reiki on top of it uh, nurses have learned Reiki so they'll use that maybe when they're working like a pediatric nurse might do that to calm a child and Reiki can also be used in shelters. So if you know the distance Reiki, you can actually go to an animal shelter with other volunteers that do Reiki, and you can sit at a distance. You're not going into the, the kennels. You're not, like, you're not necessarily handling an animal. You're sitting away from the kennels, you're, and, and there's also meditations that people do. So it's not just them holding their hands out and doing Reiki. There's different ways that the Reiki is delivered to the animals, and they find that it's very calming for shelter animals, and it's a good way if people know Reiki, it's a good to volunteer some of your your gifts to your community so if you work with animals and maybe a shelter or sanctuary and you can even do it distance from your home you don't have to go to the shelter and if you're working with people then maybe you could go to a homeless shelter or maybe there's some other um, you know people maybe there's a free Reiki clinic in your community where you can volunteer at maybe once a month or once a week or something like that so that's something you can do once you learn Reiki so that's basically, you know, Reiki was founded in the 1920s, again, by Mikawa Sui. And then he has successors. The first one was, um, I just call him Master Hayashi because I don't remember, his, I can't pronounce his first name. And then there was Madame Takata. Madame Takata was actually an American. She was a Japanese American in Hawaii. And she went to Japan because she wasn't she had a lot of health problems like a lot of health problems and she was dealing with some really deep grief and stress and so she went to um, she went and had sessions with Master Hayashi who was the um, one of the main students of Asui Mikao I mean Mikao Asui Asui died I think it was I don't know I think it was like I, want, I think it's like 1926, but I, I could be wrong on that. He didn't live that much longer than after he um, founded Reiki, and he, he taught it to as many people as he could in Japan, in his area, and there was a, a major earthquake, and you know they went out, the students at him went out and, and delivered Reiki to a lot of the people that were affected by the earthquake, but then he found out that, um, and I think they also worked with homeless people, in, in Japan as well, but then he, because they were giving it for free, he found out that you know people didn't really take it too seriously, even though they were getting uh, results. And also, it was one of the wives of I think it was the wife of um, Hayashi, who she used the Reiki on their children and also their pets, and you know found it very effective. So Reiki is is a really big deal in Japan, but it's not necessarily the same kind of Reiki that is being practiced in other countries such as the US, Canada, or Europe. Because Madame Takata brought back her own system to um, the United States and she was kind of the main the main teacher in the United States for a very long time. And then of course other people that she trained became teachers and then 
other people became teachers. So now there's a lot of Reiki teachers, instructors, and the prices vary from, you know, maybe a few hundred dollars to maybe if you go to Udemy and learn or, you know, some other online things, it's a lot less expensive. So, or you could just, there could be a teacher in your community that doesn't charge at all, or maybe they charge a nominal fee because they just want to teach as many people Reiki as possible. Or if they have a, a large enough class, then they don't have to charge each student um, very much because they have like, they could divide it between like, all the students taking the class. And so it's kind of like you're teaching a coaching program. If you're doing individual coaching, that's gonna be more expensive because it's more directed to one person than if you're teaching a whole class. And then you can, each student would charge a different, I mean, would be charged less than if it was an individual session. So it could be the same with Reiki. So, so that's what I wanna say about Reiki. Now, animal Reiki is, is specific to animals. So you train to do Reiki on humans. You get, your, um, you get at least two levels of Reiki. You might get your master's level because then if you get the master level, then you can teach Reiki. You can't teach Reiki unless you do the third level. And you're also, you would tune your students. And so when you do the third level, you learn how to attune the students. And attunement is basically the, the universal life force being transferred from the teacher to the student. It's done uh, mainly working with the crown, and then I think that they work with the chakra, and they, they um, blow each symbol into the crown, so all the, the um, if you're getting attuned to the second level, then you would only get the first three Reiki symbols, um, the Asui symbols, or if you're doing the master level, then you would get the master symbol, but then you'd already have the other ones. But they're basically, the symbols are entered into your auric field, into your body, into your your energetic field and so when you're delivering Reiki you're actually delivering all the powerful energies that also come with those symbols so that's kind of the introduction to Reiki that's a very very um, what do you call it um, truncated version of it very digested version of it and you can find out more there's many books on Reiki I can't really recommend I mean I like the art of Reiki is a really good one but um, many of the books are about techniques um, because people have you know, created their own systems. I am an Asui Reiki practitioner, so I'm as close to the traditional teachings as I can be as an American. If I were in Japan, I would be doing it completely different, or maybe not completely different, but there would be some differences because um, Japan is really the holder of, you know, of the um, the knowledge, uh, especially the original teachings of Asui, which did get diluted by the time they came to other countries. And so that's a controversy that you will run into if you um, train in Reiki because there's so many different Reiki practices out there. Okay, so the animal Reiki is, animals really benefit from it in the same way that we benefit from it. So if you have a very stressful environment and you're going to get acupuncture or massage or these different things um, to keep you, yourself calm, then anything that you're doing as far as those modalities are also gonna work on animals. And holistic vets often know how to do Reiki. And they sometimes do homeopathy, acupuncture, and other types of modalities. Now some animal communicators even have energy healing background. Some of them are working with aromatherapy. Some of them are working with homeopathy. Homeopathy is another intense training. So you want to look at, if, if somebody says they're a homeopathic practitioner, you want to look at where they trained. You want to look at how many years they trained. It's not just them getting a vial of, you know, homeopathic pills and giving it to you. It's a whole system and it's very in-depth and there aren't that many masters at it. Like, you know, maybe more in Europe, if you're in the United States or Canada, you really need to, um, again, look at their training. Some of them go to England to train because there's a lot of like really good schools. There's uh, really good schools in India. And I believe, I believe um, Germany, but I can't, I, I'm not absolutely sure on that. But so the, um, and there's also people who do flower essences like the Bach flower remedies, that's another training. I mean, you can go to the store and get whichever one you think is right for your dog or right for your cat, or right for you. But if you really want the in-depth flower essences and you want to go with somebody who's trained, um, there's uh, probably more people trained with the flower essences than homeopathy. But homeopathy is a, another good thing. And all of these things can be combined with Reiki. And, you know, Reiki is a mind-body-spirit medicine. So it will 
work on all levels. So if you were to go, if you take your animal to a conventional vet and they have a liver problem, then that vet is just going to prescribe some tests and, you know, some diagnostic tests, and then they're going to put your animal on some kind of medication, or there may be some surgery involved or medication, a combination thereof. If you go to a holistic vet, and say they do use Reiki, but then they use diet and some other things, they're looking at the entire being. They're looking at what the animal's doing emotionally, mentally, physically, the environment that that animal's in, the stress that that animal's dealing with, as well as the background that animal came from. Now, if you got your animal from a shelter, you're not going to have a whole lot of knowledge about where that animal came from and what that animal's been through. And then you could, um, you know, the Reiki practitioner might pick up some of that information, especially if they have an animal communication background like I do. So they may be giving the session and then they get some, you know, some hits. Now, some Reiki practitioners also have very powerful intuitive abilities. Um, some of them are even intuitive healers where they can find, they can feel the meridians that are blocked. They can feel the chakras that are blocked. They can actually, um, through different um, breathing and different types of techniques, and using sound healing instruments are able to unblock those um, chakras, which leads to better health. So we have so many different healing systems out there. And I'm, you know, my, my whole thing is I'm more into the complementary medicine. But again, if you're more into the conventional medicine, I don't know why you're watching a Reiki video. But, you know, Reiki can combine with conventional medicine, too, if the doctor is open to it. Now, sometimes you just have to do it on your own because the doctor's not open to it. But then when you bring the animal back to that vet or whatever, they'll say, wow, this is the fastest healing I've ever seen for a broken bone or you know, a surgery that's recovering or whatever it is, because Reiki is that powerful. Now, Reiki practitioners cannot call themselves healers in the sense that they cannot say they have a cure, they cannot say that they healed anything, and they cannot prescribe, diagnose, or you know, they get around that but they're not allowed to diagnose, prescribe, or I can't remember what the other one is. There's three things that they're not allowed to do because it's, it's a breach of, I guess, the, the conventional medicine's code of ethics, and you could go to jail if you're in certain areas where they have strict laws. If you're practicing Reiki, you also, if you're, um, your, vet might not, you, you may, your vet might not be open to your animal getting Reiki, so sometimes you have to ask your vet. And there are certain states, well, I'm not sure about states, but there are certain areas of the world where you have to get permission from your vet to do energy medicine on your animal or have energy medicine done on your animal. Um, I don't know what the laws are in the states that I've lived, but I'm pretty sure that they didn't have those laws. But you, if, if you do live in an area where you're not sure, then you would need to contact whatever whatever agency uh, or association is with complementary medicine, or you might have to go directly to the government and find out what the restrictions are, and and then you'd be able to go from there. But again, you could probably get a remote um, Reiki healing from another state or something like that, or maybe cross if you're in cross province border or across a, a state border if you really wanted to. Um, get those treatments for your animal and you're in an area where it's restricted. I mean, it's, it's weird like how there's so much fear around complementary medicine in some places. Uh, other places are more open to it, so you just have to investigate that. So that is my first introductory um, Reiki um, video for this series. I also do hands-on Reiki uh, remote, well, actually not hands-on, I do remote Reiki videos here and you'll be seeing more of them. There's only like two on them now, two new ones on here now, and I will be doing more in the future. If you like that and you want that, please comment, um, you know, share what kind of information you would like to know about Reiki or animal communication, and I can make videos on that. Now, I'm not sure exactly what's going to be in the series because I still need to sit down and make a list, but there, there will be four more videos in this Reiki series. And I will, I've already discussed the history a little bit and, and give you the introduction. So I'm not going to go back to any of those things. I'll be talking about different topics. And if you end up landing on one of those videos and you hadn't seen this one yet, then obviously you need to go to this one first. So thank you for being here, liking, sharing, commenting. You can also donate through PayPal or I am doing a fundraiser right now. And as a fundraiser, I'm doing a sliding fee, which doesn't make sense, right? Why would I do a sliding fee if I'm trying to raise funds? But there are some people out there who actually can't afford to do my regular prices and I need to raise money because I've got a broken ankle and I need money for bills and things like that. So I figured I would do an, you know, an offering. And also a lot of my videos, all my videos are free. But if you want to support them, that would be great. 
and you know some people don't have the money but they can watch the video and get some information and also you know maybe pick up some books on Reiki or go study Reiki um, because we never really have enough people doing Reiki especially where the animals are concerned because you've got so many shelters tons of sanctuaries animals being rescued all the time um, it's it you know and then there's people adopting animals there's all kinds of situations that we apply Reiki to as far as animals. So I'm gonna end this now because normally I want these videos to be only 10 minutes long. This one is twice as long. The other ones in the series will be around 10 minutes. So it won't take up too much of your time, but then you'll get like at least chunks of information. So hopefully I haven't overloaded you with information, but you know, you can go look up uh, uh, Usui Reiki, that's U-S-I-U, and you can get more history if you're interested. Um, you can look up your libraries to find books. Or you can find many blog articles and websites, uh, YouTube videos, a lot of stuff on Reiki. Um, it's something that is so simple and has changed my life dramatically. I mean, I never thought that it would. I was very skeptical when I was learning it because I always thought, well, people are learning how to be a healer on a weekend. I mean, because that's how it used to be done. Like they'd go to a weekend workshop and then they'd be a Reiki master. No, they wouldn't be a Reiki master. They'd learn level one, then they'd go learn level two, then they'd learn level three. But yeah, I never, never really thought that it would be this powerful, but it's something that I have fallen in love with and I'm very passionate about. And so if I can share it with others, I'm really happy to do that. So thank you for listening, watching, sharing, commenting. Have a wonderful week with you bonding with your pet. Bye for now.